everyone. Thank you. Welcome uh, to tonight's Advancing Creatives uh, webinar about our artist studio practice. This is a topic we are really exciting uh, to cover this evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Meredith Adler. I'm the Deputy Director at the CBCA, and we are so lucky to partner on this uh, Advancing Creatives uh, educational series with our dear friends at the Art Students League of Denver, the Clifford Still Museum, and Redline Contemporary Arts Center. Uh, they started this series years and years ago as a way to provide connections, community, and professional development for artists and creatives in the Denver area and more broadly. And we've been excited um, to continue hosting these workshops in a virtual setting uh, for the last year. Uh, so uh, just a few Zoom uh, housekeeping items for tonight. For those uh, joining us live on Zoom, you're welcome to keep your camera on or off, um, but if it helps you and everyone stay focused on our just amazing panelists, feel free to turn your camera off um, and focus on the conversation. Uh, everyone is muted when they enter. We ask you to keep your microphone on mute just to avoid any background noise or interruptions. Um, but we still want to hear from you uh, through the chat. Uh, so find your way to your chat feature uh, and introduce yourselves, uh, warm up, Get, get used to using that feature um, and let us know who you are, maybe what you do and where you're joining us from. I know we have several folks uh, from the Denver metro area, but some uh, artists and individuals joining us from further places in Colorado. And I believe some folks uh, joining, from us, joining us from across the country, which is just wonderful. Uh, we are recording tonight's presentation. Uh, so if you are watching uh, this later on YouTube, hello to you, um, and we thank you for joining us as well. Uh, we'll be sending out after tonight a link to that recording so you can watch it again or share it. Um, we know our amazing panelists have so much wonderful information to share with you. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Louise Moderano with the Redline Contemporary Art Center, who will um, help introduce our three panelists who are just incredible artists. Um, hopefully you are familiar with their work um, and will be guiding tonight's conversation. Uh, we will have time for a Q and A at the end. So as you think of questions, please put those in the chat. We wanna hear your comments and questions and we'll make sure we have time for that. Um, I'll turn it over now to Louise to guide our conversation. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Again, I'm Louise. I'm the executive director, Redline Contemporary Arts Center in Five Points. Um, this conversation is particularly dear to my heart because I oftentimes hear from artists about um, just kind of the challenges and obstacles that that come with having a rigorous studio practice and developing habits in, in sometimes a world that really resists habits and um, doesn't really allow for a routine. And so, you know, my invitation to the three artists we have in the conversation tonight, um, Daisy Patton, who is hailing from Western Mass, uh, Sammy Lee, who's here with us in Denver, as well as Ron Hicks, who's here with us in Denver. I feel like each of them have developed a uniquely rigorous studio practice. They are incredibly productive, but in the process have um, had to address different challenges in that pursuit. And so what I really, my goal for this evening is, and my goal for uh, for the conversation really is that based on their different experiences and perspectives on how to approach challenges within the studio, um, that each of you can take something from that to help improve your presence and productivity or even your feeling of uh, just being more kind 
when you find yourself time sometimes in um, a, a space of low productivity when it comes to your studio practice. Now, of course, I am making assumption that a lot of the folks signing in tonight are artists, but please share with me if I'm wrong with that. And I certainly can speak more broadly um, to, to those of you who have uh, signed on. Um, but with that being said, uh, I would love to invite, um, and, and Sammy, I'm going to kick this to you first. So please um, share, uh, you know, what your practice is, where it takes place, and potentially a recent challenge in the studio and how you address that, because I just want to dive right in. Okay. Hi, my name is Sammy. I'm a Denver-based artist, but I work in Seoul every summer for, uh, for a month. And I'm a first-generation immigrant uh, from South Korea, and I study fine art, media art, and train also in architecture. So that was my training. And um, right now, I do um, many different types of uh, work, from installation to handheld size artist books. So I create many different type of works, but um, my kind of interest is in paper and uh, making turning paper into thicker substrate that I can sculpt and cast and um, do um, non-paper <laughs> like work. Um, well, the challenge that I face is um, I'm a mother. Um, I have two kids, a five-year-old, 13-year-old, and today was actually my solo opening um, at Emmanuel Gallery. Um, and my five-year-old woke up with barking cough this morning. <laughs> so, and I don't have any family members, so I don't really have plan, like a backup plan. Um, so that was something that just kind of threw me off a little bit, but we ended up finding, my husband ended up working from home and figure something out. So, but that is um, usually a challenge I know um, it's everyone has to be perfectly healthy and performing mentally and like emotionally and physically at their best so that I can do my studio time. So that is something that is um, that one struggle that I, I want to mention here. <laughs> and Sammy, just a quick yeah. follow up to that, which I'll also ask uh, Ron and Daisy to share too. Where, where is your studio now and uh, approximately how many hours a week do you usually get to spend in the studio? Sure, my studio is in um, Santa Fe Art District area, uh, 4th in Santa Fe. Um, and I'm there 9 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. So that is right uh, after I drop up my kids at school, daycare, and, um, and until I pick them up again. So no weekend, just that street uh, week, weekday time. Okay, so Ron, maybe we'll go to you next. Okay, uh, could you repeat the question? Is that where my studio, is that uh, where Yeah, we're? so um, okay. in whatever order, um, so where do you currently practice? Where's your, your studio currently? How many hours a week are you able to kind of commit to your practice? And what's a current challenge um, or what is a challenge you've had in your studio and how you addressed it? Okay, so uh, my uh, studio is, is uh, actually very close to where I live, which is uh, right behind my house. <laughs> so I, I uh, live in the Sloan's uh, uh, lake area. And um, so that's where uh, most of the, the magic, as they say, uh, happens. Um, um, I guess uh, as for a challenge, I get, okay, so my studio time is, 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 is uh, um, especially for, uh, quite a few years has been um, different than it started out. You know, it started out, uh, or I tried to be more regimented in, in uh, the way. So I guess if, it, if there was a challenge, it's uh, uh, my, my challenge was trying to work when I shouldn't be working. And so uh, what I would do is I'd go to the studio and sort of force some things. And sometimes there's this um, fine line between, you know, you know, pushing yourself through something. And then uh, for me, not being able to, or, or I should say not painting when I'm supposed to be painting. So I guess to answer the other question is my, my practice is pretty much to paint when I feel that I should be uh, you know productive. Uh, and so that's uh, pretty much how I roll. Thank you, Ron. And yeah, Ron, you mainly work in oils or what is your prime for as a painter? 
Um, oils, yes. And I, I, I guess if I did have a challenge, I'm glad you sort of mentioned that, you know, it would be just the drying time of oils. <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and what I do to kind of combat that is, you know, I work on several pieces at a time. So I might have, uh, you know, three uh, works uh, you know, uh, working at this, you know, simultaneously. And it, it, I guess it keeps me fresh. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, Daisy. Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, my name is Daisy Patton. I'm a multidisciplinary artist, although I would consider myself mostly a painter, but I do work in uh, some fiber art, um, I've done sound, photography. Uh, it really depends on the projects that I'm working on at the given time. Um, as Louise mentioned, I, I was once based in Colorado, but now I am here in Western Massachusetts. And my studio is in a, an unattached garage next to my house, which makes it a lot easier to be painting at three in the morning, which is, <laughs> I'm doing that too often lately. Um, I, I would say that, you know, as far as like challenges and then hours per week. So I, I'm the kind of person that I really need a routine of some kind. Um, because otherwise I'll get nothing done ever. And so I, I'm not a person that strictly regiments, like I'm in this time, from this time, I'm going to be in studio, but rather kind of like of a general, like uh, I have to answer emails and do admin work. Um, and then, you know, maybe I'll get some studio time. I go out for nature hikes, I gotta eat. Um, and then I, I try to spend my time in studio. So um, the amount of time in studio really also is reflective of what kind of projects I have working on. If I'm working on a show, obviously I'm gonna be in there a whole lot more closer to like um, four to eight hours a day. Otherwise uh, it ranges. It could be, you know, two hours. It could be longer, um, six hours. It kind of also depends on what time I'm trying to get to sleep. Um, and then, you know, as far as like a challenge is concerned, I think I would say, two aspects. One is I, I think admin stuff is very challenging to keep up with. Um, you always want to spend more time in studio, but unfortunately you got to answer emails and try to apply for things and all this other stuff if you want to actually like continue sustaining your practice. And then, um, you know, my studio is, I've outgrown. Um, so I really need a bigger space. Um, and also one that has ventilation. I, I do a lot of oil painting. And so I've been putting in a fan lately to try to mitigate some of the fumes. So that would be it. Wonderful. Um, so, you know, for the remaining of these questions, I'm gonna volley this to one of you, but I invite all of you mm -hmm. to weigh in with additional thoughts if you have them. So, um, so to, to just lay the ground rules there uh, for Ron and Daisy and Sammy. Um, so can one of you, and maybe Daisy, I'll uh, kick this over to you first, uh, can you speak to the negotiations uh, with, uh, you know, kind of your family or your relationships? Like what conversations or what agreements have you had to set up when you are maintaining a rigorous studio practice so that you don't in some ways leave the relationship out um, and you can take care and there can be reciprocity and all those things. What, what are some of those that have uh, formed over the years with this practice of yours? Yeah, yeah. I am very fortunate that I have a partner that is incredibly supportive. Um, and, you know, quite frankly, I, I don't think I could be with someone who wasn't. Um, I regularly rope him into helping me with like installing stuff or, you know, today he drove my prints out to my fabricator because I had a, a different Zoom meeting that I was in on. Um, and, you know, I, so, it, it's one of those things where he's also incredibly busy. And when both of us are incredibly busy, it turns into, um, we also have different schedules. So we'll see each other at like certain points of the day. We'll like wave at each other as we're walking by. Um, you know, he usually goes to bed a good three or four hours earlier than I do. I stay up until four or five in the morning often um, making work. I need to stop doing that as I said earlier, but that's okay. Um, so, you know, I think there's also like, those logistics, you know, I'm also, I deal with uh, health struggles with like MS. And so there's a lot of like sort of juggling back and forth. And I think one of the things that's really important is like, first of all, the recognition that art making is valuable. It is work. 
And, you know, just as if you were in an office job or teaching or doing any of those other things, those things, it, it's still labor of a uh, kind. And, you know, you have to be like really protective of your time. If you're in studio, like you're in studio and you're not necessarily reachable. I try to um, listen to podcasts where I'm not on my phone as much as possible. So like when I am present and when I'm there to work, I'm there to work. Um, otherwise I'm available and around and, you know, it, it's one of those things too, where sometimes it means you just don't clean your office for several months or, you know, the housework kind of falls off and like, you know, it's, it's a back and forth process. It's, it's not something that is really set in stone. And I, you know, that's, that's what being an artist is, is very much about. I would say. Ron or Sammy, have you had to kind of make any agreements or negotiations or fallen into those agreements or negotiations in order to have a supportive uh, environment for your studio practice? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I, it seems like I'm, I'm the only one who has an outside studio and I'm a mom. So it seems like I should be also home based too, but I tried that actually. I built the shed um, and it was uh, in the backyard and it had a window actually looking at in the kitchen and I have a kitchen that's looking at the studio. So they're kind of facing each other. That was a kind of really bad layout because I'll be in the studio looking at this you know, kitchen window. Oh, I need to go and you know, you know, make pot of rice for dinner, get that going. And I'll be in the kitchen, oh, I need to go and get this thing done. So although it was very sensible decision to put the backyard shed right there, it, it didn't work. That's why I actually had to make that clear break um, between kind of home residence and the studio. So when I'm actually in the studio, even if I want to start the crock pot, you know, cooking things I can't you know I have to kind of do that make the separation and also I well right now my 13 year old being in you know teenage year he's kind of saying that I'm not going to your show I'm not going to your opening he's kind of going through that but I have done a lot of things with my boys to make sure they're either my model or inspiration or art installer or cheap, right, like cheap labor sometimes to somehow make sure they're part of my art life. So they don't say things like, oh, mom, you rather be at studio instead of having family time. So, you know, so I had to really address this issue of guilt trip uh, because my choice to do this art career. So instead of me really trying to have more of that part, I kind of pull them into my art kind of like a vortex <laughs> so um but many times they you know enjoy certain things um so yeah that's kind of my strategy and so far it's working and with my husband I had to really make them believe like honey I'll make you retire early <laughs> <laughs> with just kind of false sense of you know uh, confidence and sometimes that kind of works sometimes he's just just being nice to support me but um yeah so um just make them really part of my art um uh, that has been good <laughs> on you had something on the end there oh i'm sorry uh yeah my um you know i had a um uh you know when i got married i, I think that's when things changed for me because of my first studio practice was pretty much uh, my house was my studio. And that was, um, uh, as soon as I got married, all of a sudden that had to stop. And um, I had a studio outside of um, the, the, uh, um, the house, but then I, I found that for me, when I uh, am inspired uh, and, and this particular space was probably a, a, a good little 30 minute or so drive, you know, the, you know, if I lost that inspiration or that, you know, then I probably was just sitting at the studio going, hmm, what should I do here now? And that didn't work for me. So um, I did, uh, you know, have a separate building, you know, I do have a separate building on my property. So 
it gave me that sense of, uh, you know, separation without being, you know, too separate. So, and, and fortunately I don't have a window, like you Sammy, <laughs> that looks <laughs> directly at the, at the house because I might, you know, my thing would be like, if there was a, a ball game or something like that, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go check that out. Um, but I will say this, my, my wife has been like, you know, the, the most supportive human being because she's like the, uh, the backbone of this operation it doesn't happen without her, you know? And so, you know, so I truly appreciate her, her uh, you know, doing everything. And when I mean everything, it's like, you know, you know, CFO, <laughs> you know, the marketing manager, she's, uh, takes out the trash, you know, she does all these things that, you know, um, make it really, really, really easy for me to, um, uh, to function as an artist. Now, when we first got married, I guess uh, there was this uh, a period where I was used to like, staying up, um, you know, much like you, Daisy, uh, just and paint until like whatever. But there was something, you know, uh, when we got together where it just slowly started to just change, you know, the dynamic changed. And there were, you know, I, I changed my office hours, if you will, so that I could, you know, uh, you know, put more of that time and energy into, you know, in, into the marriage. Because I, there has to be this balance. Because if you don't have like this complete balance with your family life and your, your painting life, then, you know, it can be pretty hectic. And um, and she's always been like a team player. She's just like, if, if I'm in the middle of a show and she's, you know, and she knows things are like, hey, you know, I know you got to get things done, you know, do your thing. She's like, like um, so okay with that. So I, I'd say that, you know, um, I think someone mentioned having the, you know, a, a good supportive partner is, is probably key. And, and, you know, and I guess, Usually you figure that out before you, you know, tie the knot, so to speak, you can kind of, you know, see some of those things, you know, happening and, and, and head those off before you, um, you know, uh, tie the knot. Yeah. Wonderful. Awesome. Um, so, you know, at Redline, again, you know, I, I, I get to hear a lot from different generations of artists and kind of the struggles that can happen within the studio. And one of those struggles that I hear a lot is, you know, again, the the peaks and valleys that happen within one's practice. So um, I wanted you each to share and, you know, Ron, you kind of began with this. So maybe I'll go back to you as far as, um, you know, how do you, what typically uh, helps you regain focus or inspiration when you feel like it has gone astray um, and how long how long does that sometimes the valley of lack of focus or lack of inspiration last for you? And how can you track back? Are there, are there certain techniques you use to track back? Yeah, I, I would say I, I started out, <clears throat> you know, painting, you know, with a, just a, a different way of approaching my, my work. It was, it was, um, you know, I had these, uh, you know, these agenda and when I, this agenda, I should say, and when I let go of that side of it and started to dig into, you know, the actual um, um, me part of the painting and allowing that to be a part of the process as, a, as opposed to like forcing some things, that's when I alleviated a lot of that, uh, of that stress. So um, not that there's not times when I, I need to stop my, the way I work is I work until I don't, don't feel I'm productive on a piece or that my spirit or my heart is telling me, hey, you know what? You need to back off, and I can really. It's be, I'm so in tune with it. I can tell it when I'm doing things that are not. Oh, there goes my dog. Um, I can tell when I'm doing things that I'm not supposed to be doing, or I'm doing them haphazardly. And for me to combat that, I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier. I work on a few paintings at, at the same time, so I may just put that that work to the side and 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 start working on another piece, or I might be in that you know, in the, the process of painting and then I'll look across the studio and go, ah, I need to do this to that painting. So there's always this freshness, you know, for me or something different. So I, I've noticed here as of, of late, I'm not gonna say that there's zero uh, blockage or, you know, or, or, or lack of enthusiasm, but it's, it's at a bare minimum because I've been able to kind of keep moving uh, in that creative space. Even if that means uh, knocking down a wall in, in the house, you know, um, much to my wife's chagrin, uh, I think we're running out of walls now that I can mess with. Uh, so I do like to, uh, to tinker. Sammy or Daisy, do you have anything to add on that front? If you, when you reach a lull, do you just busy yourself in another way to, to get back to a space of productivity or 
like Ron, have you really, you know, honed in on the techniques of what can guide you back into a productive space? Um, well, I, I think I, I think it's really important to sort of state and name that like your value as an artist is not how much you produce. I, I understand we're all living in capitalism and that's kind of the metric that we often get sort of measured by, but like, you know, I think what's really important is that creative work is not supposed to be something that you just churn out all of the time. You're not necessarily making a product, you're making art. And, you know, that means sort of honoring the process of the fact that you're not going to always be working at like top speed constantly all the time. Um, and I say this as someone who's super much a, a workaholic, like I need to be working all the time. Um, but you know, the last few years for me in particular with my moving all over the place, um, I've just been really just worn down and burned out. And I had to, I've had some more gaps in some of my work. And that means that I've caught up on other things or, you know, part of the thing too is like with art making, you, you know, I, I think both Ron and, and Sammy mentioned this is like, you're also a human being who has a life. Um, you have to live life. Um, those things sort of get incorporated into your art making practice. And if you're not leaving some space for those moments, it, it's really hard to be making good work. Um, so I, I actually think that instead of looking at it in this like positive or negative or this peaks and valleys, I actually think it's just, you know, your it's all part of this like larger process of art making. And sometimes it means that you're going to be really like um, in a zone and you're focused and you're, you're doing, but you're there because you have these other moments of quiet or restoration or, you know, other, other things that sort of fed into getting back into that space. Because, you know, again, you would just burn out into a the little dust pile um, if you are constantly going and grinding as hard as possible. So, you know, I, I, I would look at it in the context of instead of it being like a creative block or, or you know, a valley of some kind or whatever else, it's just, you know, it sometimes means that your path, you're going to kind of meander and go like check out the meadow flowers and see how pretty they are for a little bit and then get back onto the like main trail to go hike up the mountain or whatever. Like you need, you need to have some time for yourself. Yeah. Um, I, yes. I think, yeah, the, Daisy, that's a great point. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> so Sammy, I'm gonna throw this one to you. Mm -hmm. um, when you have a lot of creative ideas at once and a lot of projects in progress, how do you prioritize our calendar, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and approach your different ideas and your different projects in progress? And maybe even pulling in Lori's question a little here, you know, especially even those projects that you want to do, but other projects have uh, forthcoming deadlines. So is there any kind of, um, do you have a, a strategic approach to dueling projects mm -hmm. that all are moving forward, uh, but have potentially different timelines? And how do you how do you approach prioritization of those? Yeah. Um, well, um, I think I am. You know, I, I love cooking. I'm a mom, constantly cooking, um, and so I'm going to use the cooking analogy. So um, I could run vegetable garden, you know, so certain season, you know, it's time to sow and, you know, water and harvest and pickle. So there is that, you know, timeline that goes, you know, in your calendar and in your cook cooking station. I'm just imagining very compact, very efficient, um, something with a maybe micro, uh, the refrigerator, uh, bottom and cooktop, stovetop, and little sink, and a microwave, everything in one unit, you're standing in front of it, and you're just working with your tool that you mastered it, and you know when to cook this ingredient that 
when to throw into a pot and when to simmer, when to move things from oven to in a stove and put it into microwave, you know all that. And you have kind of mastered that flow of things. And there's a time that each ingredient will be perfectly you know, cooked. There is a time, you know, it's, it's all different timing, right? So you need to kind of master the flow of how to kind of maximize each to make a feast. And I'm using the feast as not art you know, project, but it is your art practice. Um, so I think, you know, as you do this consistent time, you really get good at, you know, with the flow. And because I have a kind of optimistic, always kind of saying yes and heavily underestimating personality, I take on more things and I have to kind of juggle, but as long as you, you keep doing it, you know, I think you have that flow and deadline is actually magical. You know, so, so far I have, I felt like I am operating at maximum capacity, but each deadline actually make magic happen. So I think, yeah, you're just, as you do more of it, you're getting good at that. Ron or Daisy, do you have anything to, you know, when you have approaching deadlines and multiple projects, any other tips as far as scheduling and time management? Um, I, I will say this, you know, I had a, a good friend of mine, he's, he's an artist, um, uh, tell me one time, he said like uh, for shows when he was uh, approaching the whole idea of a show, he would make sure that he would just paint and paint and paint until he was ready to have a show or have you know paintings for an ex exhibition. So that alleviates a lot of that. Um, I have not been able to uh, master that yet, um, but it made so much sense when he said it. Um, um, I'm quite different and I'll probably sound like a broken record. Um, um, I'm of this practice and this mindset that I paint for whatever I get until it's time to exhibit and then that's what I exhibit. And, um, and, you know, and I tell, you know, the, the galleries that represent me, you know, here's, this was the byproduct of, you know, this time frame, and this is what, is, what I'm presenting. Uh, there used to be a time, and this is back when, you know, I, I think, you know, I have a, a great group of, um, 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 you know, galleries that represent me. Uh, there was a time, you know, early on, just like, yeah, we need X amount of paintings and we got to have this. It was like crank, 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 crank. And I would even talk to some of the people that were associated, you know, in some way with their, their business. So I don't, I don't understand you artists. Why, <laughs> you know, you could be making so much money. You just, all you have to do is just keep cranking these things out. Why don't you do it? And, you know, my response was, you know, I can't, you know, my heart, mind and soul doesn't allow me to do that. So, um, so I, I would just say, as long as I'm keeping, you know, the, you know, the production of art uh, much, uh, to what Daisy was mentioning, you know, you know, for what it actually is, is the creation of art. And that is, you know, I would rather, in other words, you know, have five, you know, paintings that I feel really good about than 30 that I'm just kind of like, eh, you know, I got them done uh, for me. Yeah, I, I will say that I love deadlines. Um, as someone with ADHD, I need deadlines. And I also really love the idea of like working towards, I, I, I think that I'm the kind of painter that I really like to think about a show holistically and like really sort of think through like what is going to be in the show specifically. And so I, and I also like to leave space for overpainting or overmaking um, because then you can edit down any weaker pieces out. And so I like to have, I like to make sure that I've got enough time to be able to execute that <laughs> um, as, as much as possible. And, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, knowing that, know, having a really good like understanding of like how long something is going to take and also then, adding extra time just in case something doesn't quite work. Um, my 2018, I had three overlapping shows 
of three and they were all three massive shows that I had to have a lot of work for and I I was like, okay, the only way I'm going to do this is I'm going to be in studio for eight to 12 hours a day. I'm going to have to like pack meals and I'm just going to stay there the entire time. I worked every single day. Um, I had, a, I knew exactly what pieces that I was going to make. Like I, I laid out a plan to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to like move forward as much as possible. And, you know, I managed to make it work it's it's not an ideal situation you know so that's the other thing is like um saying no to things is also sometimes a good good idea um not every opportunity I mean in that case I'm very happy I did those three shows they were very important to me but there are other instances where I will look at my schedule and go I physically can't do that right now so I'm gonna have to to say no to that and I, I think that that's really okay sometimes saying no means leaving the door open to say yes to something that's actually a better opportunity for you Wonderful. I um, Now, each of you have kind of spoken more directly about kind of the specifics of making and how you make and how frequently you make in the studio and, and kind of what those routines look like. Can you speak to those aspects of your practice and what percentage of your week do you spend doing those things that are uh, required by artists to do um, in terms of admin, like answering emails and marketing. And again, as artists, you're asked to do everything. Um, and it's uh, always so unfortunate because I wish you all had just your own office of people working towards as many other professions provide. But how do you, how do you manage the, the, not exciting aspects of being an artist. And for those of you who have gallery representation, which I know each of you do, how does your gallery help with that aspect? And do they help with that aspect? And sorry, I will throw this to Daisy first. <laughs> sorry, Daisy, sorry, okay. I and then I didn't prop. <laughs> you no, know, that's, that's totally okay. We <laughs> wanted to, we all want to be like lovely people to yes. see the, the floor. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the, Zoom, the Zoom challenge. Daisy, <laughs> you know, how does K Contemporary help you and what percentage do you put to again, you know, saying yes or no to opportunities via email and, and yeah, approaching that admin side. Yes, um, I I remember. Oh gosh, this was back when I was at Redline. I had read an interview with an artist who was asked a similar question, and they basically responded with, "It's really unglamorous to say, but like, I only spend thirty or forty percent of my time in studio. The other thirty percent is on admin work. I have another like thirty percent that goes into social media presence. Um, I don't have that kind of." percentage breakdown but you know there are times where you have to deal with you know the emails and everything else um you know if you're working with commissions that means that you're having to talk to the collector about like negotiating all of those different things um I do have um gallery representation in both Denver and Seattle and even still like you know I'm I'm, I'm communicating with them it is not something that um, I, I know that the old model was that you never heard from your gallery and then suddenly things would just happen. And I, I personally don't love that idea, to be honest. I'd like to know what's going on and I'd like to be um, helpful and, and, and have some say in some things. Um, so, you know, I think that it really just kind of depends um, on the week. I, I think it's really helpful to like um, know when is your best time to do something. So like, for example, I'm pretty brain dead when I first wake up because I'm not a morning person and I know I wake up not in the morning, but even still, when I first wake up, I'm not very like put together. And that is the perfect time to answer emails because you're not overthinking it. You're just like, <laughs> that's done. Um, whereas like, I want to spend the time where I'm like really physically and, and mentally present to be painting. Um, so, you know, I think it's really important to like, try to to understand that about yourself and what's your best self. And also understanding that like, if you're the kind of person that really dreads or hates having to deal with this kind of stuff, you know, it is, it's part of the process. And, you know, you just sit here and go, okay, maybe, maybe instead of it being like per day, maybe it's like this day of the week, I'm dedicating to getting all of this stuff taken care of. 
you know, I, I think it's just a matter of like figuring out what works, works best for you. I've done both where like sometimes it's today's my admin day and I'm going to get caught up on all the other stuff I have not done for a long time. And then, you know, other times it's I'm going to answer this while I have a chance. You know, it's I, I think a lot of folks, it's one of those things where it's like I can either do it now or I could just not do it at all. And so, you know, sometimes when it's like something important, um, like answering emails for invitations to things, it's like, okay, I need to answer like right now and I need to stop what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I, I think it, it's just one of those things that you just have to like, you know, swallow the frog and just deal with it kind of a thing. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I agree. <laughs> uh, I, I am the worst with admin. And um, uh, again, I have a, a wonderful wife that handles a lot of those things. So um, it um, allows me to be free to do other things. Um, I did have, you know, a good friend of mine, an artist friend say, hey, you know what, you need to, you know, really start paying attention to like your social media presence and things of that nature. So I did, you know, start, uh, um, you know, doing like Instagram and things of that nature. Um, I was, um, the funny thing about Instagram, I think it was for the first uh, two weeks, I got into this phase where I was just like, wow, there's some likes on there. I'm going to see what these are <laughs> or who's liking me, you know? And I ran down this rabbit hole of, of like, Ooh, there's another one, you know? And then I said, okay, I got to turn these notifications off because this is ridiculous. Um, so, uh, you know, for me, they can be kind of like a distraction, but I know we, it's, it's, it's one of those things you, it's, it's kind of like pretty much everything, like my checking emails. Um, I noticed for me, if I don't get on top of it, like when they're happening, then it becomes like this monster. So uh, I try to, you know, you know, keep that in mind. Um, I, I have had a number of the galleries that I work with that are very, very, um, you know, conscious about, you know, uh, you know, marketing plans. And I think that um, over the years, you know, when I'm having conversations about representation or, or new representation, it's like one of the questions I, you know, I ask is like, well, do you have a plan, you know, for, for marketing and what do you do? Because I, I think that, you know, when galleries do represent you, that that's part of their responsibility. You know, you know, our responsibility is to create, you know, you know, um, work, but you know, their responsibility, I guess, is in part is to market it and make sure it gets out to the masses. So um, sometimes it's important for, you know, just as it is, is for me to pay attention to some of those things, you know, most of the gallery, matter, matter of fact, all the galleries that I work with, you know, have a plan for what they're doing and, and they and they execute that plan. So if it's helping them, you know, I'm, 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 I'm uh, quoting one of the, the, the owners, like if, if, I, if I'm helping uh, you, then it's helping me. So it's like, it's cyclical, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's helping all of us. So uh, my advice would be, and I know it's really tough if you don't have representation or, you know, you're just getting going um, uh, to, you know, ask these kind of questions or expect those kind of things, but it's something to aspire to. Or as you move along in your career, then, you know, those that are not doing those sort of things you know, are the ones that, you know, you, you, you either move on and then you hope to, you know, get to a situation with, with um, uh, or a relationship with a gallery that is doing those kind of things. So one of the things I just love hearing is that, you know, and I think it's actually really sound advice. It's like, as artists, it is important to do an environmental scan of your uh, you know, your, your, the people and the infrastructures around you, they could potentially help in those, those things that you know you're not great at. So that it doesn't necessarily always have to sit and feel like it sits on you. Um, so, you know, like Sammy pulls in her kids to her art practice, Ron pulls in his wife, Daisy pulls in her very uh, supportive spouse to understanding that she will be up all hours of the night and sometimes that these moments in passing are brief and also going to a gallery with an understanding of what you need help with, mm -hmm. you know, and being clear about that. And if it's not a gallery, it's your other support systems in your creative practice. Mm -hmm. You know, I experience artists very much universally as very generous. But I also think it's really important to be able to say um, how others in your life that you are generous to can be generous back to support a productive practice. Because as you know, Daisy was saying, like what you do should be valued. And I always note that I would never want to wake up in a world without art and culture. And that is of paramount importance to I think the entire globe's happiness. So don't undervalue our 
you know, in some ways give yourself away when it comes to what you add to the world and add to, um, you know, humanity. So um, I feel like it's, it's a really good piece of advice of, you know, what are your weaknesses and who can you pull in to help support you in those ways so that you can focus on, um, again, those aspects of your practice that you're strong in and it can really uh, have a, the greatest out, output in that case. Um, okay, so in closing, and then we're gonna kick it to questions, um, but maybe could each of you share what you feel like is the best studio habit you've developed over your period of being an artist as your uh, professional careers as artists, and then what habit you'd currently like to change. I feel like I know that uh, um, Daisy would like to change her staying up too late at night, but Ron, I'll, 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 I'll send this to you first. <laughs> um, boy, what would I like to change about my studio habits? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, and what's one that you feel like is really the best one you've created? You know? Well, I would say um, my, my progression as an artist has been um, the thing that's been the, um, one of the, the best things for me. And, and that is I started changing my focus on what I was trying to accomplish in my work. Um, uh, uh, I may have mentioned this, I can't recall if I said this, but if I did, now I'll say it again. When I started out, I had, it was more of an academic thing, you know, and I had like these goals that were based on um, you know, my comparison to like other things that are around me, like other artists or preconceived notions about, you know, what, you know, art is uh, and things of that nature. And then I started to, you know, fade away from that because I started to, you know, say, well, wait a minute, if it's not about this, this tangible thing solely, then what is it about? And I think that when I started to concentrate on what was inside here in my heart, you know, and trying to really speak, you know, have a voice because art to me is a language, you know, it's, it's a way to communicate. And so it would be like trying to communicate, you know, with someone else's mouth or vision, you know, and, and you're not really speaking, you know, from here uh, out of your own mouth and your mind and your heart. But when I started to change the focus, then that was the, one of the best things that could happen for me because then I was able to look at the work that I was putting out and just be okay with whatever it is because it was coming from me and it was from the heart. And if as long as I'm satisfied with it, whether it sees the light of day or not, I'm okay with that. Uh, so I would say that that would be uh, probably the um, um, the best. Now I will say this, you know, when I, especially when I'm in crunch time, one of the worst things is just my studio becomes like a freaking mess. I mean, it's like, uh, um, <laughs> you know, there's like things like everywhere. So I guess you know, being more organized would be one of those. Okay, my dog is going off for some reason back there. Um, I would tell him to, you know, be quiet, but I would have to run that way to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I think I think a, a little bit more organization, you know, would 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 be something that I would say would be the very very best thing for me. And I'm going to. <laughs> Sammy, do you want to go next? What's what's kind of the best studio habit you have created over the your time as kind of a practicing full time artist? And then what's one you'd like to change? Yeah, like a habit. I could talk about the bad one first. Um, kind of, you know, it's, you get very personal with your wor work that you're creating almost like, you know, it becomes like your child, but don't risk your life, you know, do making it, you know, read the label when you're using chemicals, wear a glove and, you know, whatever protective gears. I was up on the high ladder holding this kind of, uh, varnish that's fume, not really wearing mask and rubbing it with a bare, you know, hand to touch up things like no no right but you're just doing that because you kind of feel this very closeness with your artwork you feel like you could do things and it you know um so just kind of thinking in the long term that you want to stay healthy and and be able to do this long term so that is kind of bad habit that i want to change and somehow in um prioritize working out or doing something good for your body so um, that's, yeah, what I want to work on. Um, I don't know really good habit at anything that I do in the studio to be able to get, you know, work done and kind of create this kind of community. I think that is what I consider, you know, uh, what I learn and that is a good thing. And um, for me, it's a collaboration. 
I love collaborating other people. And it is also from knowing my, like learning about who I am as a person. You know, there are certain like things like, you know, we talked about admin, you know, writing grant and, you know, writing budget and all this thing that I would hate to do it for myself. But when it becomes a team project, you know, together, I, I love, you know, doing it and getting things done. And sometimes I know myself that, yeah, I wouldn't do that. You know, I wouldn't just, you know, stay up late to try to finish those documents. But because I have someone who's, you know, trusting me that I'll get this part done, I'll do it. So it's a lot of things actually gets done because I collaborate and work with other people as a team. So that's kind of something that is very positive aspect of um, collaboration. And you create really great artist community uh, while you're doing that. So I'm happy about something that I learned along the way. Yeah. Lovely. OK, Daisy. I, you know, you mentioned community, Sammy. I think one of the, I, I'll, I'll start with the positive part. For, I, I think there's something really important about understanding that as artists, you know, we do have the solitary time of working, but we're also not islands. Um, we really need each other. And your opportunities, your support is going to come from your peers. And I think it's really important to sort of make sure that you are, you know, trying to be generous with your time <clears throat> not in the sense of like giving yourself away constantly but just like you know regular studio visits or check-ins with other artists and peers you when you see artists that are doing work that's really fantastic like let them know you know in the same way that you would want to hear that kind of feedback I think it's really um really special that um we get to do this kind of work and that you know our art and artists are, are so necessary for this world, um, even though we're constantly told we're not. Um, and, you know, I think that, um, you know, acknowledging that um, and making space for that is really important. Um, you know, I think that uh, having a routine and, and part of that could be your routine too, is that, you know, you're bracketing in some time where it's not necessarily like, you working, but you're still doing art related things by communicating with other artists or other, other folks that are related. Um, and then, you know, the, the bad habits. I mean, I am, the pandemic has made it hard because everybody's sleep schedule is all out of whack. So I used to be able to go to bed at two and, or three and nobody was awake still, but now people are awake until like two or three. And so I have to stay up even longer. Um, so, you know, I do, I do want to do that. I, I also, um, one of the things that I have really struggled with and I finally kind of gotten on top of, it's not going to be for very long, um, is to be on top of like my finances, like as a sole proprietor, having to like put together all my receipts and income and expenses in a spreadsheet um, instead of waiting until December to go, what did I make this year? <laughs> Which is the worst possible thing you could do. Um, and then, you know, also like um, having organization within like your studio practice in terms of like, you know, your office or your studio space, like that kind of stuff. I think that um, it sometimes can be very easy to just kind of like ignore all of the things piling up and then not see it anymore and be kind of kind of, um, yeah, neglectful of it. And so, yeah, I, I think it's just, it's an acceptance that it's just going to constantly be like that forever and ever but that's okay. You know, I, I love this whole idea of, of, of community. I, I had a number of, um, uh, of times when I shared um, um, thoughts with other artists, even did my collaborations, uh, both physically working on the same pieces uh, to, you know, collaborating on ideas and having like conversations. So I, I, um, I, I dig what you guys are saying with the whole idea of community because that I think is what fosters like, uh, you know, creativity. You know, um, I do agree that we, we shouldn't be islands. And sometimes some of the things that, you know, that might inspire me may come from another source. And then you can take some of those things and run with it. So uh, I appreciate you guys uh, mentioning those things. Yeah, I would say that um, conversations with each other certainly is yet another tool one could take into addressing certain challenges. Um, you know, and, and how those challenges play out in the studio. Um, yeah, I would, I would also echo how I see a, um, 
healthy um, competition, but not really competition, collaboration happening within Redline Studios when that happens. There's just, there's conversation, which then, you know, kind of stirs more ideas between the studios, which is, I think, really productive. Um, yeah, I, well, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say one thing I think also that can be really important that I think often gets like kind of forgotten about is like physical activity. Like as artists, we're like physically active in our studio, but like also like, you know, um, as I mentioned, I have MS and, you know, while I was in Denver, I, as I was further along in Redline and then after Redline, I stopped having time to do my daily walks. And, you know, you really, especially as you start to get older, um, if you don't use it, you lose it. So like I'm doing Pilates, which by the way, I'm like such an evangelist about this. Like if you're an artist and especially <laughs> if you're a painter, like I cannot say enough how important Pilates is because it really like helps you strengthen your muscles and helps deal with all of the like I have like chronic neck issues and like back pain and stuff like that and it and you know carpal tunnel would it kick in I can't begin to describe how much it's helped um deal with that but then you know also the daily hike so I think it's really important to also like hold make space for that because you know that is part of life it doesn't have to be like going to a gym if you like gyms that's cool um but yeah I just wanted to throw that in we have a question coming into the chat that says, have any of you done any sort of creative co-working where you work alongside other artists, whether on the same project or not, question mark, alongside other artists as in in the same space? And of course, I know that this is actually part of many of what you all have done, whether in residencies or um, yeah, in, in working on similar projects. Um, but does anyone wanna share a little bit more about, um, yeah, what those experiences are like. You know, it ha has been working in other uh, collective studio spaces been advantageous to your practice? I can say for me, um, when I've worked with a number of um, abstract artists, and I thought for me, going outside of what my norm would be, uh, a couple of the artists that I worked with were doing some not a, a, a not objective or found object, you know, which is completely opposite of what I would do, but I found this value in it because I started to stretch outside the four corners of what my panels would be and, and reached into other areas. And then uh, with Doug Casino over at uh, K, you know, when he had his, uh, his adventure with the, uh, um, the crossover show, you know, and uh, he, we kind of traded paintings and he went and painted over this one canvas that I had. And I remember getting some collectors calling me up because they saw the video and they were just like, why did you let him do that? You know, and I was like, I was, you know, I, I thought, you know, for me, I can always paint another painting, but to have that sort of experience, that would just not normally happen. So I felt as though it was something that I had to do and experience. And it was, it was well worth it because I, you know, took one of his paintings and, you know, and, 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 you know, painted on top of it. So there was that collaboration. So I've done a number of things that sort of brought me outside. So I was looking at things completely different, as, especially because I, you know, when I was coming up, um, or I, I should say when I got into, um, you know, college, you know, it was really this atelier style thing, you know, you must paint like this or else. And so you had to paint exactly what that instructor said or did, or, you know, it was almost, almost mindless in a way, even though I know you need a little foundation. But it was still you didn't get outside of those uh, the, the four corners, and then that was like it. So, um, anytime I get a, a chance to you know do some sort of collaboration, you know, given the time to do it, then you know I'm I'm always down for that. Daisy, I'm going to invite you to answer Molly's question that just came across the bow. Do you ever throw work out? There are some pieces. Yes. Okay. Do you want to, you want to <laughs> share a little bit about what it? What, when is it okay to let a child go? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that may be the wrong analogy. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. Some, some of them are good children and some of them aren't. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, especially if you're a painter, but any kind of like making process, you're going to make good work and you're going to make bad work. And you're going to make a lot of bad work to make good work. That is part of the process. And Failure is extremely okay. Um, I would rather get my bad paintings out smaller than larger. Um, 
you know, so I, I really do actually want to have a bad painting because otherwise if I'm not having bad paintings and I'm starting to question and think to myself, am I making a bunch of mediocre work right now? This is not good. Um, so I have thrown away my work a lot um, and I'm someone who really um, loves archives and, and that sort of thing. So I do try to document just so I have that, you know, I, I had to toss work sometimes because it was too big when I was younger and I didn't have space. Um, but, you know, also if it's like a colossal failure, then you just go, yay, I got the bad painting out of me. Um, and now I can make the good painting. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, I, again, it's, you're not making a product, you're making art. You don't know what's gonna come out of that. And sometimes, you know, I, I have pieces that I consider odd ducks and I'll call them odd ducks. And it's it, sometimes they're, they're awkward, but they're hinting at a direction that I'm heading towards that, you know, doesn't necessarily quite work at that moment, but it will at some point. So I, you know, I, I think it's really okay. Um, I know a lot of artists, I, I, I like to think that there are two different kinds of painters. Um, there's the painter that will keep working on a piece over and over and over again until you rip it out of their hands. Um, <laughs> and I've met a lot of those. And then there are the ones that are very decisive, make the piece. If it works, great. If it doesn't, out to the trash it goes. Um, I'm definitely in that second camp. And I think that either process is really great. I know some um, people who keep working on different pieces and, and suddenly transform it into a completely different object. Um, you know, I, I, we, we all have camera phones now. Like we can take pictures. Of, of different process points. So that way we can at least know what something happened. And this is also helpful to like, make sure you're not overworking as well as uh, you're able to like, look at these different time frames and go, okay. And if it's a failure again, throw it out, that's fine. Well, I wanna honor everybody's time. Um, I, of course, you know, check out the chat. Lori has some good cathartic uh, recommendations in terms of uh, how one dealt with uh, <laughs> failures in a good way. Um, I just want to invite, first I want to say thank you. Of course, thank you, Meredith, and thank you to the CBCA team, and thank you to our wonderful panelists, Sammy, Ron, and Daisy. So much for your time, so much for your thoughts and your energy towards us. This was yet another opportunity that came across the bow that you said yes to. So I appreciate you saying yes in the midst of the balancing act that is a productive studio practice. Um, I want to invite each of you to just to share what's coming up for you and uh, what folks could know to look out for, um, so that you know they could they could support you as you have supported all of us in this conversation. So yeah, uh, Sammy, do you want to start since you your sure. opening was today and talk about a balancing act? <laughs> oh yes. Um, I opened today and it's really exciting time to reopen because we got rid of all that big, huge six feet apart dots from the gallery floor. And we are going to be able to have a reception too. Um, so it's at Emmanuel Art Gallery, which is a UCD campus, Auraria campus. And we're having, uh, having reception June uh, 17, June 17, X, uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So whoever has availability and really miss that gathering, art gathering, and seeing people, we might not actually have to wear a mask. So then please come. <laughs> Ron, do you want to go next? Uh, sh sure. Um, so I had a couple of things. Um, I have a... Um, a show with this uh, gallery called the Mockingbird Gallery that's uh, happening in August, uh, November, New York, and also another show in New York. Uh, the galleries kind of moved to the same area, so now I'm uh, <laughs> and, and doubly. Uh, so that'll be in July of, uh, of next year. So I'm, I'm, I'm prepping for those. Uh, and I, I think, oh, and then there's a, a LA art show that's coming up in July as well. So um, you know, getting some work ready for that, but that's about it. Brilliant. Okay, Daisy, take us home. Oh. 
Well, I, I do want to say that I really appreciate um, the generosity of everybody here right now. And like, just in terms of like engaging and like the questions and everything, I absolutely adore um, Sammy and Ron and Louise and all of you all. So um, it's been really lovely. Uh, you know, I have, I'm going to be part of a group show at the Katona Museum of Art in New York. Katona, New York, um, that will be in July. I think the preview is like July 10th and then it goes somewhere in September. Um, this year is my lighter year. I, I just finished a, my solo with my Seattle gallery and then next fall will be my next um, solo with K Contemporary. And I'm currently working on that right now on the family portrait. Um, so yeah, a couple of things. Awesome. Uh, okay. I have to say this. Uh... Yeah, go run. I love the way Daisy is sort of melting into her. Uh, <laughs> I try. I'm trying to hide as much as possible. Is it working? That's awesome. <laughs> okay, that was it. <laughs> okay, Meredith, will you, do you want to take us home and close this out? And thank you all so much for being a part of this conversation and for all who joined us this evening. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Louise, uh, for taking your time as well. Um, such wonderful insights and honesty um, that you all shared with us tonight. Uh, we are so grateful. And for all of you who have joined us, we had a pretty full uh, Zoom room this evening. Um, so, so yeah, I will, I will give a shout out to what we have going on at, at CBCA. We have an arts and wellness forum tomorrow about using arts to help healthcare workers deal with stress and trauma. And then uh, we have three webinars in June on money management for creatives. Oh, so interesting, so fun. Uh, so that's what we have coming up. Um, and that's it. Have a good night, everybody. Uh, enjoy your evening. Uh, and thank you. Thank you for spending time with us.